So let's talk about um, surface tension and viscosity in um, These are both the result of intermolecular forces. We, we wouldn't have solids and liquids if there were no intermolecular forces. The particles would just fly apart. So what's surface tension? Um, you may have seen this trick before. You can float a paper clip on the surface of water. The density of a paper clip, which is made out of metal, is greater than the density of water. And so a paper clip should sink. And usually they do. But if you set them very carefully on the water, it will float on the water. And if you look at that picture, you can see there's kind of a little dent here in the water. It's almost like there's a skin on the water. You may have seen water bugs. They skate around on top of the water. How can they walk on the water? It's surface tension. Um, you, if you try to float a paper clip on something like gasoline, which is also a liquid, it won't do it because there's not enough surface tension. If you put a drop of soap into the water, the soap will break up the surface tension and the paper clip will sink. You can also float, float a needle on, on water. Is that related at all to buoyancy or is buoyancy completely? It has nothing to do with buoyancy because the paper clip should not float based on buoyancy. It, it's dense and it's not displacing water. You know, a, a boat made out of metal will float because it's displacing the water, and so it will float. But this is floating based purely on the surface tension of the water. Surface tension is just kind of cool. Um, so let's look at these molecules here. So there's these are water molecules or, or liquid molecules, whatever you want to call them. We'll call them water. Um, so let's look at this guy right here. He is experiencing forces of attraction between all these guys. Everything, every molecule around him, he is attracted to. And this is only showing two dimensions, but it's also in three dimensions. So that's one of the molecules in the interior of the liquid. He's like got all these guys that he's attracted to, all these other molecules around him. is very comfortable there. Molecule on the surface is only attracted to molecules on the sides and molecules on the interior. There are no molecules above him to attract him. And so he is basically being pulled inward by these forces of attraction. This guy is attracted in all directions, but the ones on the, on the surface are only attracted inward, downward. And that's, that's the surface tension that pulls the water molecules or the liquid molecules in. <clears throat> so water drops are spherical because of that surface tension. So here we see um, a drop of water and it's, it's, you know, it's a droplet shape, right? It's not perfectly spherical. Well here's some guys having fun on the space shuttle and in outer space where there's no gravity Water droplets floating around in the air, they're perfectly spherical because they're all being, all the molecules on the outside of the water are being pulled in. And a sphere is the shape that has the smallest surface area relative to its volume. So these liquid molecules are going to get into a shape that has the smallest surface area possible. So everybody's getting pulled inside. The reason it's not perfectly spherical on Earth is because of gravity is pulling this down and so it gets distorted a little bit. But the surface tension of a liquid affects how large the water droplets are. And so if you've seen some of those older movies with bad special effects where they're using miniature models and stuff, sometimes if there's water involved you're looking at that and like there's something wrong. The water droplets are too big. You can't make water droplets smaller than a certain size because of the surface tension. It's very hard. The water will drop if you, you know, get your faucet going really slow. You see the, the water droplets are always the same. You really have to mess with things to make the droplet size different. Um, so that's surface tension. Viscosity 
is the resistance of a liquid to flow. So things that are, are viscous flow more slowly than things that are not viscous. So motor oil is more viscous than gasoline. Gasoline is actually less viscous than water, but you may not have noticed that. Honey is more viscous than water is, right? And molasses and good pancake syrup. It pours slowly. So honey, you know, you, you pour it and it just it takes forever to come out, right? Whereas water just comes right out. Water is less viscous. And it has to do with the amount of intermolecular forces. So viscosity will be greater in, in substances that have stronger intramolecular forces. Because as the, as the particles are sliding around to pour, they're, they're being held back by those intermolecular forces. So the stronger those forces are, the less they're willing to, to move. And it didn't really talk about this in terms of, I'm just going to jump back real quick with the surface tension. Um, a substance that has more, stronger intramolecular forces is going to have higher surface tension. So water has high surface tension. Um, something like gasoline, the intermolecular forces are weaker. The surface tension is less, and that's why you can't float a paper clip on gasoline. I wouldn't recommend doing anything with gasoline other than putting it into an engine. Right? So don't, don't go home and try that. Feel free to try the paperclip on water thing. So back to viscosity. So maple syrup is more, more viscous than water because the molecules are so attracted to each other, they don't slide very well. And so it pours, but it pours slowly. Any questions about surface tension and viscosity? We'll stay off the pancake picture in case anybody's hungry.